Thank you once again for that insightful discussion. Thank you to all our guests. We'd also like to thank our silver partners, Nine Unicorns and Venture Catalysts. Ladies and gentlemen, we are all now set for our next session. I can already see our next panelists waiting. What we now want to discuss over the next 30 minutes is perspectives on growth and an aspect that is very crucial to every entrepreneur, startup founder, and that is profitability. For this session, I'd like to invite our esteemed guests and panelists, Akshay Chaturvedi, founder and CEO, Leverage.biz, Abhinav Sinha, global COO, Oyo Rooms, Nidhi Kilawala, partner, Ketan & Co, Priyanka Gill, venture partner, Kalari Capital, and Mehek Kazbekar, who will be the chair for this session, editor-in-chief, VP for Brute India. Could we have it for our guests and our chair, please? Hi, good afternoon everyone. Uh, I know we are the only thing keeping you from uh, lunch, uh, but I promise this is going to be a cracker of a session. Uh, we can start with, uh, so thank you to everybody uh, and this uh, esteemed and fantastic panel that we have today. And we're going to be talking about uh, profitability and growth. Um, I'll request uh, everyone to give a quick line of introduction and maybe their first thoughts on profitability and growth and we'll kick it out uh, from there. Uh, Abhinav, maybe we can start with you. Sure, Abhinav Sinha, I'm the global CEO and CPO at OYO, have been with the company for 10 plus years. Uh, just starting off, first thanks for having me on the panel and great to see uh, all my uh, uh, co-panelists. I think the key uh, aspect, uh, we always spend a lot of time talking about growth and profitability from a market perspective, from a larger ecosystem and macro perspective. I think a lot of the answer uh, fortunately lies from within the company, the stage of the company, what is the real technology-driven moat in the company, what is the size of the market they are addressing. These are the questions sometimes which get overshadowed by the seasonality and the macro trends. And as long as, you know, the, the internal uh, thesis around how you balance profitability and growth is kept in perspective, the answer might be independent for each company and might you, you might end up with a very different answer rather than thinking about the macro itself. So that's what I would like to say as we kick this off. Hi everyone, my name is Nidhi Kilawala. I'm a partner uh, at Khetan & Company. Um, as part of my job, I basically spend a lot of time with founders and VC investors looking to invest in uh, Indian startups. So happy to be here. Great to see the panel we have here and looking forward to this conversation. I think just taking a um, uh, feather from what Abhinav was talking about, uh, uh, macro factors do, of course, have, a, have an impact on the micro that we have here, especially when you think about uh, deal terms and things that you will start focusing on when you start raising capital from uh, venture capital investors. Uh, the way macro factors are at play will have a direct impact on what sort of investors are looking for when they're negotiating rights package with you. So uh, happy, like glad to be here and looking forward to this conversation. Hi guys, good afternoon. I'm Priyanka Gill. I am a venture partner at Kalari Capital. I'm also a co-founder of the Good Glam Group. And uh, profitability and growth, I think that's a reason why we all are here in business. And as founders, if those are the only two things that you are caring about, you're doing it right. Everything else except that is noise. So our job as entrepreneurs, our job as investors even, is to literally kind of keep your North Star metrics right. And the only two valid ones are how much money you're making and then how fast you're growing. Hi, Akshay Chaturvedi, started and uh, run Leverage. Uh, we are a student recruitment company that is helping students become global citizens of tomorrow. Uh, grateful to Ty to be on this panel with this with my very esteemed co-panelists and must say uh, been in uh, been a big fan of Abhinav uh, and it's an absolute honor to be with him on the panel. 
द देसी वे ऑफ सेंग इट एस की इतनी औकात नहीं है कि साथ में बैठे आपके बट वेरी ग्लैड टू बी सेटिंग लर्न अ लॉट फ्रॉम यू ओवर द लास्ट फ्यू ईयर्स एज यू हैव बिल्ट ओ एंड टू द कंपनी डेट इट इज आई एम गोना जस्ट इन माई वन लाइन एज गोना बी अ स्लाइटली कॉन्ट्रोवर्शियल टेक एंड आई थिंक डेट द इको सिस्टम द इंडियन स्टार्टअप इको सिस्टम विच हैव बीन अ वेरी प्राउड पार्ट ऑफ द लास्ट फिफ्टीन ईयर्स एवर सिंस आई फिनिश स्कूल आई थिंक जो हवा चल रही होती है वही हवा चलनी शुरू हो जाती है एंड फॉर द लास्ट एटीन मंथ्स एवरीबडी सेंग प्रॉफिटेबिलिटी एंड ऑफकोर्स प्रॉफिटेबिलिटी इज लाइक द गोल्डन थिंग बट ऐसी लॉट ऑफ फाउंडर्स एब्सोलूटली किलिंग ग्रोथ इन दर कंपनीज फॉर द सेक ऑफ प्रॉफिटेबिलिटी लाइक लाइक डी ग्रोइंग एंड आई थिंक दैट्स ऑल्सो नॉट वेरी कूल ऑफ कोर्स वी हैव टू बी वेरी वेरी ग्रैंडुलर अबाउट द यूनिट इकनॉमिक्स मेक मार्जिन टू मार्जिन नेगेटिव रेवेन्यू रिड्यूस योर कैक्स बी वेरी 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 थरो विद एवरी सिंगल एस्पेक्ट ऑफ योर एवरी स्पेंड एट द सेम टाइम इफ यू नॉट ग्रोइंग neither the private markets nor the public markets nobody is going to give you love as you build forward so don't sacrifice your growth dna don't sacrifice your momentum which is very very hard to build in the name of uh, profitability i think that's what i'm just going to leave this with thank you and uh, all of those gems which are great kick off points uh, for this session um i wanted to do a quick check in uh, with the audience uh, any show of hands on early stage founders here yeah? okay that's okay all right that's fantastic um so you know uh, what advice and maybe um uh, priyanka we can start with you uh what uh, what what advice would you give to early uh, founders when they are looking at growth uh keeping in mind uh, what akshay just said on profitability uh, and when uh, the going gets tough uh, and uh, they have to chase profitability so when you are in that growth uh, stage what advice or what are the things that they should keep in mind I think Akshay will agree with me when I say that uh, actually you shouldn't take advice, especially from panels <laughs> like oh, this. <laughs> But look, uh, if you're an early stage entrepreneur, uh, it's a time when resources are very scarce, right? You don't have a team. You probably don't have that much capital. You have an idea, and you want to basically build towards it. And uh, at that point, growth is basically the lever that you have to push to get capital interested, right? so when you are that early stage getting your poc right and even proving your thesis on a small base that's enough to actually get early stage investors and kalari capital is an early stage investor to uh, get us to take notice so if you are an entrepreneur if uh, there is a fit between the fund and the entrepreneur we feel that you are able to build we feel that you are resilient Uh, that you will be able to deal with the pressures that are the natural part of uh, building any business i think once that personality fit is there then the domain in which you're building whether the market that you are trying to address is, uh, is large enough whether you have a logical way of addressing the market and whether we can see a there a natural right to win developing for you in the future right once those things are basically sorted preferably there is a poc uh, you kind of proved your thesis to some level already of course we know it's going to change we know that you know i mean uh, it change everything changes very quickly if those things are in place then uh, i think you get an early stage investor interested so uh, you do have to start thinking about growth and all excel spreadsheets all kind of business plans everyone knows that i mean those are i mean you're literally putting uh, it's a pie in the sky right so the fundamentals do matter at that point and the entrepreneur probably matters more than anything else so um, i mean i started as a digital media entrepreneur and today where the good lamb group is it's kind of recently away from that but you're as long as you're able to change learn reeducate yourself all the time i think then you're in a good place uh thank you for that uh priyanka uh, abhinav uh, you know you've Uh, you've walked the whole uh, mile uh, and um, what happened when uh, once you've grown and then you have to start chasing profitability uh, in hindsight uh, when you look at that what are some of the lessons that you thought uh, in in the early stage when you were planning expansion uh, i wish i'd known this or kept that in mind um i think it's a it's a million dollar question i'm sure every organization first of all i i would say that you know it's a success for an organization to come to that stage where you have to pivot from growth and think about profitability so that itself you know the the entrepreneurs are always very harsh on themselves but getting to that stage is great so uh, in retrospect what i would say and call out that of course when you are an early stage company growth is more important your relevance comes from growth you're a very small company and profitable and if you're not growing the relevance especially in the ecosystem 
in the India scale that we are talking about, the re that relevance is not there. Uh, something which is very, very critical in this pivot is what Akshay was talking about, is the growth DNA. The growth DNA is essential when you grow and is a challenge when you make the pivot because the whole company is anchored around growth. The culture is driven by growth and you have not really built the muscle or you don't know which are the muscles that you need to exercise when you really need to pivot towards profitability. I think certain things really help and that is what our learning has been in this journey. For example, thinking about uh, what is the discipline that you need to avoid massive mistakes which come from a growth only mentality? How do you put those structures in place? For example, a mechanism in org structure can be what we call the maker checker mechanism. So there is a team which is the maker, there is another team which is the checker. So you can think about these structures and they can start influencing the mindset of the teams, teams which operate in a growth mindset but from the indi uh, individual contributors right up to the top at the CEO level, you can have these structures which make it easier for the pivot to happen, which make it easier for the layers to be built on top of the organization when it is time to think about profitability. So this is one. The second thing I would say is profitability at the end of the day is a very big cultural change as well. So talking about it openly and really sharing a path across the organization in terms of how everyone contributes to that journey is very important. So you can't have this as a you know, management committee level initiative where everyone else drives growth and the management drives profitability because that leaves Such a lot of people point. confused. So I think these are the two things which I would say from a learning perspective and of course you know there are so many other even more important areas in terms of which profitability levers you unlock at what point of time and that itself is a science and an art both together uh, which has to really you know in my opinion first align strongly with the belief of the entrepreneur more than anything else. Uh, thank you for sharing that uh, um, uh, you know Nidhi I'm just going to come to you in just a minute uh, especially on the uh, boardroom bit uh, but uh, Akshay uh, you know, taking a leaf out of what uh, Abhinav just said, um, when you're pivoting towards uh, profitability, you know, the management as founders and management, when you're moving a company from the growth phase to chase profitability, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the kind of teams, uh, you know, that, uh, that you build and uh, the kind of culture and team and what is that role that it plays when you move from sort of a growth mindset or expansion mindset chasing profitability. Sure. So I think I can speak more specifically about leverage and what we've tried to do there. Uh, we've always uh, brought in young people who have stayed with the company for a period of five, seven years of existence and then we have continuously invested in them and said that, hey, you keep on taking more roles, keep going very, very granular and I think that's where the, uh, that's where all the victories come from. And I think if you, and let me also kind of just rephrase what I said before. I said, I use the word growth DNA, but I think the real word I should use there is uh, uh, a beauty for details DNA, right? And if you really understand your genetic economics, for example, let's talk about, uh, uh, sorry, I'm focusing more on the co-finalists, but like good glam group, right? Like content to commerce, right? Like they really realize that Facebook, Meta, etc., uh, Meta, Google acquisition, etc., is going to be always through the roof. The real way to crack commerce in this country is going to be if you build your own acquisition loops. So we did that partly. 67% of our acquisition is now organic. It comes from a very well built out SEO ship which contributes 11%. It comes out from community which is 6%. Comes out from Verifils which is 16%. Another couple of products, 3%, 4%, 5%. And then you, and the remaining 33% which is performance marketing is also like optimized affiliate and not so much meta and Google like wasteful spend. So I think if you really build a DNA where everybody appreciates detailing, where every, everybody is like right from bottom to top, is obsessed with getting, uh, uh, like, what's the right word for it? Like, obsessing with optimizing things. Mm. I think then growth and profitability both are like, they, go they, hand they, both, hand. they both go hand in hand. They both kind of are very seamless and putting going together. So for us, it was not very difficult to change the course from growth to profitability because we had built, I think we're also very lucky because we had seen a lot of companies come before us and seen how they have played things out. 
सो वी आर ऑलवेज कैंड ऑफ लर्निंग फ्रॉम इको सिस्टम फ्रॉम पैनल्स लाइक दीज एंड सेंगड ओके अच्छा इसके साथ ये हो रहा है तो पहले ये देख लेते हैं अच्छा ये कॉन्टेंट टू कॉमर्स कर रहे हैं लोग हम लोग पहले ही कॉन्टेंट में इन्वेस्ट कर लेते हैं सो आई थिंक आई 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 एम आई हैव ह्यूजली बेनिफिटेड फ्राम ऑर्गेनाइजेशन लाइक टाई एंड इंडियन साइड ऑफ इको सिस्टम टू सेड ओके वॉट्स हैपनिंग लेट्स लर्न फ्रॉम दिस and let's be uh, learners of uh, how to kind of really be more detailed in a business okay. uh, thanks for that uh, nidhi i wanted to get you in here quickly you've shepherded many a company uh, through both the growth and the profitability uh, phase um let's talk about governance uh, a little bit and i think um, uh, that structure that board structure which needs to be uh, you know in place so when you're speaking to to founders here a lot of uh, the founders sitting in the audience what are some of the things that they should keep in mind uh, you know uh, with respect to the board thanks for that um, i think what we're seeing now is some of these conversations are becoming very relevant even at the early stage i think there there was this perception that i'm going to have to start thinking about governance and metrics to decide whether i'm doing good on the governance front when i'm probably b and beyond um, and these are not problems that i need to focus on today i think given macro and where we are generally in the ecosystem these are becoming relevant conversations very early on i would say at series a stage as well and so i think it would do founders good uh to start thinking about these at a i think the top 3 things i would say that i spend a lot of my time helping founders navigate today at early stage is how the board is composed do think about that i think founders think a lot about also maintaining a tight ship and control over things um it doesn't always bode well with the conversations you're having with investors yes it's important for your idea to turn into a, a vision and reality and yes you should be the captain of that ship uh but the manner in which you go about that conversation and where some is a good to have and where some things are a must have that distinction needs to be made very very clearly akshay and i were in fact just talking about that uh, before the panel that sometimes lawyers transcend into roles that they play for you that goes beyond pure lawyering but you know into mentoring and just helping you navigate those situations i feel like it's very important to have that perspective so think about what is within your control and that you absolutely want to control and what are things which will give investor comfort and therefore are not uh, battles that you must necessarily fight because it could backfire things like deal terms versus valuation right where we are today as well uh, yes valuation is important but sometimes founders land up giving deal terms which probably in the long run will go to valuation uh, so think about how again when you're negotiating those documents um are you really probably asking for too much or giving up too much uh, um, around exit around economic value and things like that Uh, and the last thing i would say is on protecting thy equity it's the most important thing it's important to know when to dilute how much to dilute who to dilute to uh, capital is great but uh, not all capital is uh, given equally and so i think it's just important to have your focus on some of these levers while you're trying to unlock the growth versus equity uh, growth versus profitability debate i'm going to push that to uh, priyanka when to dilute how much to dilute uh, and and sort of guarding that i i saw that akshay gave a big smile as well uh, as <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> so uh, priyanka from the other side i mean once of course you built built the uh, built the good glam group and now you know on the other side as an investor a venture capitalist uh when to dilute how much to dilute what would your advice be to founders you know it's that one of those most tricky questions that are out there right because you dilute uh, for capital you need capital to grow you won't get capital i mean usually you won't get capital uh, without dilution i think as investors uh, it's very important and you know, uh, we see a lot of i mean capital cap tables right and often times you can't look at a deal because the cap table is messed up so the health of the cap table that's i mean especially in the later stages becomes very important uh, how much is a founder holding in the company if the founder for that stage does not have a meaningful stake in the company then that also becomes like a like a red flag a bunch of companies who raised kind of at very aggressive valuations in 2021 say uh, maybe the revenues have not met up and now suddenly you have your valuation is there and your revenues there you're going in for your next round and that next round is just not making sense right so it's kind of good to get carried away in kind of the madness of a good fundraising year but you also always have to keep your next round in mind so your question was when to dilute how much to dilute i think under speak to your fellow entrepreneurs understand for the stage of the business that you're in this much makes sense to give away right um i know we have a lawyer here with us and when i was an, an a founder 
The other side, lawyers say, this is standard. Like there is, and also for the room, there's no such thing as standard terms. Everything is a negotiation. Of course, you should know when to give and take. But I was like, what do you mean standard? Yeah, this, this term is standard. You should just agree to it. And that's what the other side would say. So please don't uh, listen to that. But the point here being that you have to understand that what is fair for the stage that you're in. And don't value yourself that high that you price yourself out of the next or your future rounds. Right? If you're going to say that my valuation is this, please understand when you're coming to the market again, you're going to have to justify the valuation that you raised your next capital at, and the revenue, whatever stage it is, is going to have to justify the number that you want to raise for again. So don't put yourself into a hole, because it's always good to say, oh my god, my valuation was this, but valuation is again on paper, right? I mean, the, uh, the real unlock only happens at the very end of your journey. So be rational about it, and always keep your valuation to a point where the next round does not become difficult or impossible for you. The next one not becoming impossible for you, um, and you've given my, uh, you know, uh, you've given me a segue into the next point, which is unicorn, uh, and uh, looking at those valuations. And I know that before the panel started, everybody was talking about how there was 2013, 14, and that time would never come, and then there was 2021. Uh, so um, uh, Abhinav, uh, you know, uh, uh, while uh, building a unicorn, unicorn being the buzzword, talking about valuations. A, tell us how you did it, uh, and what advice would you give to founders today who are chasing that unicorn dream? Uh, let me start by first mentioning that, you know, it's very easy to give advice and <laughs> very difficult to really act on it when you are actually the person on the hot seat. So with that caveat, and everyone uh, faces very different situations, so I think the, the key is at some point of time, you know, the, the balance of this question comes along, where as an entrepreneur, your job is to dream, and your job is to dream big. And uh, it's very difficult to understand, you know, how big is big enough, and is this the right time to dream that big? So typically, you know, these are type of questions which each entrepreneur has to answer in their own journey, and. Uh, Unicorn, it's just, you know, a milestone, but is the, the key question, in my opinion, is, you know, is this a valuation that I'm raising at? Is this uh, just too onerous for me to live up to in the next few months, years, next few rounds? Right? I think the, the integral part of that has to be a core belief in the size of the market that you are addressing and a core belief in the type of moats that you are building around it, right? So if the building of the moats is going to take a lot of time, that influences the answer. If the size of the market is going to be big, but it is going to take time to reach that size, that influences the answer. But I will again go back and say that in the moment, it is uh, from a mindset perspective when you're raising, uh, being a little more conservative around how you intend to deploy the capital that mindset maybe allows you to make the right, get to the right answer. Uh, but it is, again, I will say very, uh, it's much easier said uh, than done. I think the market I have consistently seen, at least in my 10, 12 years as part of this community, the market becomes a more dominant answer driver than the individual or the situation of the company. And uh, in some cases, you got to play along. So, you know, I think uh, as the market in India matures, we will become, hopefully, uh, you know, the cycles will become less and less intense on either sides. And that would be great for the entrepreneur in the first place. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, Akshay, uh, what are your thoughts on it? Um, uh, you know, uh, there's been a slowdown in terms of the number of unicorns in India in the last, uh, if you look at 2023 compared to what it was, uh, but your thoughts uh, on this buzzword? A bunch of thoughts also in some sense summing up what my co-panelist was saying. I think uh, one point that Abhinavsa mentioned a few minutes back is really important, uh, relevance. I think at an early stage, if you don't have relevance, I think it, it kind of just finishes there. You can be profitable for all you want, but nobody gives two hoots, right? Like a lot of uh, profitable people out there on the street. So relevance is super important. And I think he kind of just used one word to call it out really nicely. Uh, second point, uh, which I think is, uh, which I'm just taking a segue, which is important about dilution. I just want to also kind of, because a lot of entrepreneurs in the room right now, uh, sometimes it is okay to dilute when you need that capital and for that capital, you're also getting a great 
partner slash mentor on board who can really guide you on the journey because I think every founder is also on a journey to evolve themselves. Uh, and I can, without pointing to anybody else, I can say that I've also evolved, I also evolved every single year, every single quarter in my own journey in terms of how I look at things. So I think if you can really, uh, if you're giving up equity to kind of get the right mentor who's gonna change you as a person, change you as a founder, I think that's a very good saw that to do. And also realize that late stage investors are not gonna be as, uh, I don't want to use the word, but I can, yeah. They're not gonna be very sharky and say, uh, 50x चाहिए, 100x चाहिए। देखो ना इसे 3x दे तो भाई बहुत बड़ी बात है। 2x दे तो, 3x दे तो, 4x दे तो बहुत बड़ी बात है। And that point of time you can also kind of crawl back your equity. You can say that यार, if you want me to do well, 3x, 4x, 5x, I'm gonna build this for the next 10-15 years. Give me some equity back. And we've seen enough cases in Indian private equity which happens all the time. All the large private equity boys do it. It's a regular practice. So it's okay in your journey as an early stage founder to sometimes give away equity, get the right mentors on board, be relevant, build. Like he said again. जो बॉल आती है उसके हिसाब से खेलो पाउंसर आ रहा है डक कर दो पर सामने फुल टॉस आ रहा है तो छक्का मारोगे ना मतलब यू हैव टू प्ले बाय द मार्केट एंड देन गो अबाउट एज यू कैंड ऑफ गेट टू द बिग बॉय गेम यू ट्राई टू सेट सम ऑफ दोस रॉन्ग्स राइट सो आई थिंक इट इज अ वेरी डायनेमिक गेम देर इज नो वन एडवाइस फिट्स ऑल यू हैव टू कैंड ऑफ प्लेड बाय द बॉल played by the ball um talking about uh, building exit routes uh, nidhi i wanted to you know uh, once you become a big boy and uh, and after that looking at building exit routes uh, what are some of the uh, things that you know uh, founders can keep in mind early stage founders can keep in mind uh, especially you know when to decide to go public what what are the correct exit routes for you uh, and i would request uh, you know abhinav and priyanka also uh, to weigh in on it after nidhi please go ahead no, no thanks for that um, i think the reality of raising capital like this is that it has to be returned um, and so you need to start thinking about what is the natural exit for a company like yours not every company is ready to list or will probably ever be ready to list so i don't think one should chase a listing dream only because that seems to be what everyone's doing i think a lot depends on what is your product what is your uh, sort of exit strategy and what is the natural exit for a company like yours uh, and that could very well not be a public listing so i just wanted to put it out there because it seems like a lot of the conversations i have with people is when you ask them this question so what what next when is your exit what what, what do you think about an exit it'll just be like listing karenge but like you need to think about whether that's the right fit for you maybe an acquisition being acquired by a strategic player is probably beneficial more beneficial for you maybe that's why your investors are pushing you so i think it's just important to keep um, keep thinking about what is the right exit strategy for you and your cap table um, the other is trusting investors also to have transparent conversations about them about this because they can really leverage their network to put you in front of the right players who are probably um helpful in your journey if that means eventually an exit so be it uh, so i think again uh, going back to the point abhinav uh, uh, akshay was making as well that it's important to uh, trust have these conversations and also know that um Uh, along the way you might need to pivot and change strategies because well your company is just not the same as where it started off uh, so i think it's important to just keep your eyes on that price be willing to have these conversations and when you're thinking about this from a document perspective again like i said it will need to be returned the capital and so not necessarily resisting the obligation to providing an exit but equally being nimble enough to shift gears and strategies if required right uh, priyanka on pivoting you know the exit route and uh, and pivoting which is what nidhi was talking about uh, when to decide that it, it's time to exit uh, or it's time to pivot to something else and uh, we've had great success stories in terms of pivoting as well right you know i was just listening to nidhi and literally she could it was a story of my my journey right so uh, in many different ways so um, we uh, she spoke about uh, knowing what is the right exit for you Every, most companies are not suitable uh, to be listed right and that's a fair point but it is your job as an entrepreneur to provide an exit to your investors it's your job as an entrepreneur to provide an exit for yourself right you only unlock value when some form of exit is given so i think that being said right so you have to get it to a point of exit in my particular case uh, popexo was a digital media company plexo was an influencer marketing company and uh, never in our wildest dreams frankly did we ever think that listing is going to be our natural uh, place right so i think having that realism is important and you have to know what you're building or we are passionate about things that we build for and you should understand that so once that realism is in place 
uh, you have to then understand like where can the exit come from and it can come from many different places and oftentimes its circumstances will push you to that. So in our particular case, um, we uh, were raising, investor backed out, pandemic happened. One of our investors then uh, introduced me to uh, Darpan Sangvi who had a brand called MyGlam and uh, PopExo MyGlam merged, right? So PopExo, all the investors who were on my original cap table, all of them got kind of, uh, they became part of this much larger journey. And now of course MyGlam became a unicorn, we are looking to list in, in the next few years. So I mean, I was lucky to bring my investors up to a point where they could actually partake in kind of the, uh, the, the, the listed journey, but as PopExo, I, we would never have had that opportunity. So I think having that nimbleness uh, that was mentioned, being realistic about who you are, what you're building, and also being in a way humble enough to say, hey, you know, this might be a better way to do it. And you know, oftentimes, again, this is for the entrepreneurs in the room, solutions will be given to you, we say, yeah, you know, just wipe out your investors, we'll give you more money. Stuff like that also happens, but it's your job to kind of hold on to your integrity Someone has given you capital when you were just starting out, you have to make sure that they come to a comfortable place. And for me as a founder personally, like, you know, the, many things keep us up at night. But the thing that kept, keeps me or kept me up at night the most was I didn't, I wanted to make sure that my investors got a return. Man. They believed in me when we were nothing. They gave us money, capital, hard-earned money. And uh, a lot of them were friends. So, you know, I had to go back and face my friends and say, boss, I took your money and I'm going to give you something back. So I think, look, your job as an entrepreneur is to exit some way, right? And to be realistic enough to know when it is time to do it, and then not to have an ego and say, no, I'm gonna wait it out, right? So, yeah, and if your, list, if your company can list, amazing, but that's not the only way out. Not the only way out. Uh, I'm, uh, I know we are completely out of time, but I just wanna get Abhinav in here to, to just complete. Now on track, we've already run out of time. Uh, my good. apologies. We understand and appreciate that. <laughs> um, uh, just two minutes for Abhinav. I'd like to really wrap it up because we were 45 minutes late for the panel. So I'd, I'd like to end with Abhinav, please. Yeah. I'll, I'll not take too much time. I think uh, the, the key is, everyone has already mentioned, the key is to make sure that you are very clear about what you're doing. You have to understand the incentives of your investors. Are they okay with the timing? Are you ready or not? I would just like to call out that at the heart of it lies the answer to the question that have you built a piece of something that others want, right? If you are there, I think what we are hearing consistently is multiple options of exit will open up, right? But if you're not there, then it becomes, a, you know, billion dollar question because, you know, you have not built something yet that many people want. So, you know, it's just time to keep building. So I think that is something which we have realized from your own experience you stumble upon milestones and then you realize that gradually are, you are building something that many people want. And that is the beginning of the, that's T is equal to zero for you to start forming an exit strategy. And for the right reasons, you need one. Thank you so much for that. Thank you for those two minutes uh, as well, uh, organizers. And you've been stellar. We couldn't open it up for questions, but I'm sure uh, after this panel, when we're off the stage, you'll, ha uh, you'll have questions for the panel. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let's give it up for our stellar panel. Could we have a small token of appreciation to be given by Yitika to our panelists? Could we have the panelists together for a photo opportunity, please?